There's something tying all these seemingly disparate but very aesthetic pictures together. From a surreal galaxy businessman in the clouds to an ukiyo-e style print of a banana boat with monkeys as sailors, these pictures were not created by humans, but by deep learning models prompted by text and turned into content. Artists used to spend years developing their skills in different mediums learning about anatomy, perspective, lighting, and color theory while developing their style. But with the release of AI models like Dolly 2 in 2022, the wildest ideas can be created and modified in seconds with the click of a button. Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that is focused on creating new original content. It has the potential to change the way we create and consume content and has a wide range of applications, including the creation of realistic images and videos, new pieces of music, and even writing. The origins of generative AI can be traced back to the 1950s when researchers first began exploring the idea of using computers to generate creative output. However, it was not until the recent advances in machine learning and the availability of large amounts of data to train these models that generative AI really began to take off. But what does the rise of generative AI mean for humans and traditional content and art creation? On the one hand, generative AI has the potential to augment and assist human creativity, allowing us to create more and better content faster than ever before. On the other hand, there are concerns that generative AI could eventually replace human creators, leading to the loss of jobs and a shift in the way we think about and value art and creativity. But the question remains, is the content created by generative AI truly art, or is it just a series of algorithms producing outputs that are lacking in creativity and human touch? There are arguments on both sides of this debate. Some believe that generative AI has the potential to create truly original and creative works of art using algorithms and data in ways that may not be possible for humans alone. Others argue that the lack of a human artist behind the creation of the content means that it cannot be considered true art. But even past the semantics between art and content, at the end of the day, humans are still needed to create media, right? Well, not for this intro, which is all done through ChatGPT. We've already seen AI beat humans in complex games like chess, Go, and poker. AI art is no different. AI-generated art submissions have already edged out humans in art contests. Jason Allen's work, Theater de Opera Spatial, was created using Midjourney and received the blue ribbon in the Colorado State Fair's contest for emerging digital artists making it one of the first AI-generated pieces to win such a prize, drawing controversy with accusations of cheating. As learning models iterate with more data, its knowledge base to produce outputs will become more refined as artificial intelligence and industry players and research teams race to become the most developed and popular model to tackle the $8 billion generative AI market, expected to grow 34.6% yearly to an estimated $110.8 billion by 2030. When comparing this figure to the approximately $130 billion US artist labor market by annual wages, many human artist roles are under threat of change or obsolescence over the next decade. There have also been claims that 90% of online content can be generated by AI even as soon as 2025. With ChatGPT growing to over 1 million users within the first few days of its launch, generative AI has demonstrated that rapid growth trajectory in such a short time. Today, we'll dive into how generative AI works from a technical and business perspective, the major players in the segment, potential intellectual property dilemmas, and end with a discussion about generative AI's impacts to human creativity. First, a quick overview on how generative AI works and the business models in play. Generative AI works by learning from a large data set and then using that learning to create new similar content. There are several different approaches to generative AI, but all of them involve training a model on a large data set and then using that trained model to generate new content. In extracting value from their models, many generative AI players began as nonprofit research organizations not focused on revenue. Since beta launches, business models have since evolved to add subscription as a service and pay-per-use models in tandem or individually. OpenAI and Stable Diffusion has a freemium model where users receive a limited number of tokens for free to generate words or pictures, but then charges for tokens to use above the initial free offering. Other generative AI applications like Lenta AI charge a membership subscription model on top of or instead of a pay-per-use model 
When comparing generative AI's ability to generate a picture for a cent per use and at the click of a button, human artists paid to do art or content that used to take hours or days are at a great risk of getting displaced with economic and time savings for customers. To keep these learning models online being fed vast amounts of data, the main operating cost besides headcount is computing power to process inputs and generate outputs using GPUs within servers. According to Tom Goldstein, associate professor at Maryland, the cost of running ChatGPT is $100,000 daily, or about $3 million monthly. At the query level, a single 30-word response from ChatGPT costs at least one cent, acquiring a server with at least eight GPUs, a small amount per query. But as millions of users scale with multiple queries, computing costs on the cloud will rapidly spike to an unsustainable level without changes to its revenue model. As OpenAI prepares to launch a paid subscription version of ChatGPT for unlimited queries, even going so far as surveying users for the price they'd pay, generative AI players will need to develop a revenue model that accounts for the average amount of queries per user and charge above that to have a profitable business model. So how much should users pay for ChatGPT? As a thought exercise, let's estimate queries on ChatGPT using Google's 8.5 billion searches per day at an average query per person of four daily. Using back of the envelope math, 120 queries per month would cost $1.20 monthly. This does not account for any discounts on Azure credits OpenAI may benefit from with its partnership with Microsoft. Extrapolating this to find a potential price for a ChatGPT subscription, anything above $1.20 would bring OpenAI positive gross margin above computing costs. But as an educated guess, it would require a monthly subscription of at least $2.67 to meet or exceed Google's current gross margin of 55% as a comparable margin profile. But these are just rough assumptions, and generative AI for visual art, music, or other complex media will, will probably require more computing power per query. As I'm editing this video as of January 20, 2023, OpenAI actually implemented their paid subscription model at $42 monthly, suggesting either higher uses per user or cost per query, or the opportunity for an even higher margin on its revenue. Generative AI faces additional factors in user price sensitivity and competition from other generative AI players that may put price pressure as programs emerge from its beta launches. Ultimately, like the search engine wars between Google and Bing, the generative AI players who will succeed and become the used model will be the programs who have the highest legal access to proprietary datasets that generate the most diverse and accurate responses to prompts. Though meteoric in rise, the nascent war within generative AI is just beginning to develop the network effects needed to establish a technological moat against competitors. Within AI art specifically, the most prominent models are Dolly 2 by OpenAI, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion by Stability AI. Midjourney, an independent research lab founded by David Holtz, launched its beta version on July 12, 2022. The team currently has 11 full-time staff and is self-funded. Trained with datasets from Twitter and Reddit, Midjourney is currently only accessible via its Discord bot on its official Discord and works using the Imagine command following a command prompt to generate an image. Overall, Midjourney's model is best known for its style with resulting images looking more like paintings and photographs and its environments with dramatic lighting. Notable works already produced by the program include the theater d'opera, Bechal, and an AI-generated children's book created in the span of a weekend called Alice and Sparkle, a book about a young girl who builds a robot that becomes self-aware. In this process, creator Amar Rishi spent hours tweaking mid-journey prompts, rejecting hundreds of generated results to ultimately choose 13 illustrations for the book. Released in August 22, 2022, Stable Diffusion is an open source text to image model that is powered by a latent diffusion model, a cutting edge text to image synthesis technique. Stable Diffusion does this by separating the imaging process into a diffusion process at runtime, meaning that the program starts with only noise and gradually improves the image until it is entirely free of noise, progressively approaching the provided text description. As diffusion models typically consume a lot of compute, the latent diffusion model is particularly special as it is applied in a latent space of powerful pre-trained autoencoders to reduce complexity and time to preserve compute while maintaining high resolution. Overall, stable diffusion is excellent for intricate creative illustrations, but falls short when creating general images like logos. 
Stability AI, the creators of Stable Diffusion, last raised a $101 million Series A round led by Co2, Lightspeed Venture Partners, and Hoshanasi Ventures on October 5, 2022, putting the company's post-money valuation at a billion dollars. This round seemed as large for such an early stage company, but not as large as the next one. Dolly 2, released in November 2022 by OpenAI, uses more than 10 billion parameter training versions of the GPT-3 transformer model to interpret natural language inputs into images. Dolly 2, the most sophisticated out of the three having been trained on millions of stock images, produces arguably a better picture than Midjourney or Stable Diffusion when there are two or more characters. Dolly 2 works in two parts, one to convert the user input into the representation of an image called the prior, and the second to convert the representation into an actual photo, called the decoder. OpenAI, the creators of both Dolly2 and ChatGPT, last raised a billion dollars of venture funding from Microsoft on July 2, 2019, and is currently seeking to raise an additional $10 billion from Microsoft in an upcoming round. The funding would give OpenAI a post-money valuation of $29 billion, with Microsoft getting a 49% stake, other venture investors getting another 49% stake, and OpenAI's nonprofit entity owning 2% of the company. As the company behind ChatGPT and with astronomical growth with the leverage to monetize, the company projects 2024 revenue of $1 billion, implying a 29x EV to 2024 revenue multiple. The company has yet to reach these revenue targets and may look like a rich valuation, currently not based on fundamentals. But for Microsoft betting that OpenAI will effectively take market share from its rival Google and its key domain of search engines, this could represent an existential inflection point for both tech giants. Speaking of ChatGPT within chatbots, we'll focus on ChatGPT by OpenAI and GPT-3, but other prominent projects include Chinchilla, Bloom, Megatron Turing NLG, and Lambda. As a brief comparison, ChatGPT is more suited to chatbot and conversation, while GPT-3 is better suited to tasks that require more intricate natural language processing. GPT-3, developed by DeepMind, a subsidiary of Alphabet, is one of the most powerful language generation models with over 175 billion machine learning parameters as one of the largest neural networks ever produced. GPT-3's large language model can produce long-form content but requires an enormous storage capacity. GPT-3's superior size and resources enables it to perform a wider range of functions, including text generation, machine translation, and question answering, and has a general purpose design that gives it unmatched business application capabilities. ChatGPT, on the other end, is considerably smaller in size compared to GPT-3. ChatGPT's conversational model makes it better suited to real-time chatbot applications since it generates responses faster and more effectively than GPT-3, making it a more effective consumer-facing program. ChatGPT was especially developed for conversational modeling, and as such, it excels in producing conversational responses in numerous use cases, including answering questions, creating code, and generating numerous forms of written content, including essays. DeepMind, acquired by Google for $650 million on January 27, 2014, seems prepared to respond to Microsoft's involvement in open AI, and overall, a proxy war has begun between these two tech giants. Many have criticized Google for not releasing an AI chatbot sooner, but in reality, Google has the capabilities to release one. As a large corporation, Google's speed of launching an AI chatbot is largely delayed by its lower margin for error in product launches. OpenAI has been able to launch a viable product like ChatGPT in beta as a smaller, more experimental startup that can move quickly. A potential case of the nimble startup disrupting the large corporation, despite Google once being a startup itself many years before. But as a result of its more experimental beta launch, there are some kinks and some answers to prompts that can be inaccurate. ChatGPT sometimes writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers. Unlike other AI assistants like Siri or Alexa, ChatGPT doesn't use the internet to locate answers. Instead, it constructs a sentence word by word selecting the most likely token that should come next based on its training. Lastly, OpenAI's lone time in the spotlight may soon come to an end as DeepMind releases its own version called Sparrow. If Lambda's arguable sentience is any indication on the power of Google's AI, then Sparrow might perhaps be an even more powerful chatbot than ChatGPT. But going back to AI art, with such great power in replicating styles and specific art characteristics, arises new ethical and legal issues with intellectual property. On October 3, 2022, the famous South Korean illustrator Kim Jong-gi, known for his spectacular ink drawings of scenes with dynamic perspectives, passed away from a heart attack in Paris. 
Not even a week passed until a former French game developer known online as 5U fed Zhang Yi's work into a stable diffusion AI model and shared the model on Twitter allowing any user to create Zhang Yi style art with a text prompt. The life's work and portfolio of a person had now been taken and productized without consent posthumously, automating Guy's distinct style and arguably taking the life out of his art and human experience. Many other artists like Samda's art has had their art fed into AI models without consent, and now artists who have spent years cultivating their unique style must now fight the threat of its imitation in seconds by an algorithm. As generative AI develops with more iterations, Controls will need to be put in place to ethically source data fed into learning models with consented materials. But if the NFT craze was any indication, artist theft will be rampant when technology makes stealing faster and more convenient in protecting one's work. This theft of ideas extends not only in visual art, but also writing as well as AI chatbots like ChatGPT are now capable of writing complex essays with a simple prompt. Plagiarism in school has the potential to be easily facilitated as the advent of online search previously gave rise to copying and pasting unsighted sources, but this time with the unsighted source of being the generative AI model. Fortunately, a 22-year-old senior at Princeton University has developed GPT-0, an app to detect whether text is written by ChatGPT or human. To determine whether an excerpt is written by a bot, GPT-0 uses two indicators, perplexity and burstiness. Perplexity measures the complexity of a text, and if GPT-0 is perplexed by the text, then it has a high complexity, and it's more likely to be human-written. However, if the text is more familiar to the bot because it's been trained on such data, then it will have low complexity and therefore is more likely to be AI-generated. Separately, burstiness compares the variations of sentences as humans tend to write with greater burstiness with some longer or complex sentences alongside shorter ones compared to more uniform AI sentences. While not 100% accurate, the app represents a pushback and a check on the potential to abuse generative AI. In a tangential intellectual property dilemma, there is also the issue of if AI-created content can be copyrighted. In the US, copyright may be given if the creator can prove substantial human input. It means animals who take selfies cannot own the copyright to their pictures. But more importantly, there is no copyright protection for works generated solely by a machine. The gray area arises with the human input involved, with the machine where a case could be made to grant copyright if the creator tinkered with prompts to fine tune the images with the human vision in mind. Future court cases will have to decide the thresholds for these and set the precedent as looming legal battles begin the fight over commercialized art generated by AI. Finally, diving into the question on whether creativity can be automated, we have to first define it. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, creativity is the ability to produce or use original and unusual ideas. But is there anything truly original? There's an old saying that there is nothing new under the sun. So maybe creativity is actually taking existing elements and combining it together in a novel way. Within design thinking specifically, Creativity is a structured process using divergent thinking to brainstorm ideas and then convergent thinking to arrive at a specific idea or solution. Instead of being innate, creativity is actually learnable and involves both diversity of thought and structure simultaneously. When looking at creativity from this perspective, generative AI is able to have divergent thinking systematically with all of its inputs within its learning model and then convergent thinking with a prompt to arrive at an algorithmically produced output. But if all models ingest the same data at scale, would they eventually converge on similar outputs? Very likely. This makes the art lose something intangible that only a human can recognize and fill. In the Kim Jong-gi trained models, the pictures have the same dynamic perspective and expressive inking, but when staring at it, something feels off in the unintelligible formless faces. Perhaps a lack of training or the inability to express humans organically. At the end of the day, humans create art to express themselves, and AI is only an algorithmic imitation of an amalgamation of works but will miss the emotions a piece of art can convey without significant human involvement in tweaking the work and imprinting their unique vision. Some of the best artists were known not for their technical perfection, but in how they broke the rules to make something unique. 
In the late 1980s, when music production was innovated with the arrival of quantization and devices like the MPC, music production could finally have precise and exact beats and drum patterns. In an environment where producers had perfect compositions, Jay Dilla set himself apart from the robotically assisted beat patterns with his own unique drumming style of loose, off-kilter beats that gave his music more bounce and funk as he later released arguably one of the greatest instrumental albums in Donuts before his death. Jay Dilla's MPC used to make those beats is memorialized in the Smithsonian today. Within visual art, the advent of photography disrupted the art world and how art was perceived when it was introduced just like generative AI is doing today. Despite making art accessible throughout society, many were initially critical of the media and viewed it as an industrial imitation of art for commercial purposes. Realism in art decreased in demand as human expression eventually emerged to respond to photography. The rise of Impressionism and later Modernism and Surrealism made artists explore different aspects of painting in color, light, movement, and symbolism to stray away from realism that could not compete with photography and accuracy, but could stand just as tall with its expression of emotions. The new innovation in art displaced many existing artists within realistic art styles but forced innovations within the process of creating art. Overall, generative AI may ultimately be viewed as a tool rather than as a total replacement for human expression like all innovations in art before. Many artists are at risk to be replaced in the short term, but eventually, artists will change their creative processes to include generative AI where needed. The artists of tomorrow may transform the role into something similar to an artistic director, project manager, or even prompt designer directing prompts and refining the AI results with human-led tweaks. The artists of the past were known for the technical ability to recreate realism or ability to create extraordinary effects by hand. Perhaps the standout artists of the future will be known for their imagination and critical thinking to ask the right queries and develop a vision to express the human experience. One thing is certain, generative AI has now prompted the artistic world to create something new once again, and it's waiting for our output.